Smells like a child with flowers out of hell with blood on her hands and two of us and she says she feels a dog. My name's Mike, welcome back to the shop, and today we're talking about sodium filled valves. So, this is a thing that's actually as old as the fucking hills, really. Basically, what you do is you have a valve, uh, like so, and we'll, yeah, we'll cross section that. And then, basically, what you do is you have a section like this, and they put sodium in the valve, and then they have a cap and they cap it off, and so on. Why do this? So this is a thing that they used to use in aviation, that's pretty much where it started. Um, this was because back in the day, their material um, their, the material technology wasn't as good, so the steels weren't as good. Um, and when these valves got hot, we saw that with the Indian V-Twin, where basically they used to have these um, ports to, to allow cooling, you know, air to be drawn in um, to cool the valves, to stop the valves from cooking. When they went up in power levels and all the rest of it, they found that the exhaust, ga uh, the exhaust valves were basically bending and shitting the bed. Um, because when materials get hotter, they get weaker. Um, or their strength, in a sense, drops. Um, so why one sodium? Why do we put sodium? Well, what they do is they half fill the valves. So they basically fill it halfway. They don't fill the entire valve, I don't believe. I'm trying to remember now. I have seen a sodium valve, I've just never seen them fill them. <laughs> um, I think they do it halfway or like two thirds of the way up, something like that. Um, but why use sodium? Why has sodium been used? Well, it's for a couple of reasons. Um, the melting temperature of sodium is um, a lovely number. It's uh, 9779 degrees Celsius, so 97, just you know, just below 100. Um, and then when we look at, so basically what happens is as this valve starts to heat up, the sodium will um, basically melt and when it goes through that phase transition of being a powdered basically a solid when it melts and becomes a liquid it takes energy to do that so it absorbs that heat the other thing as well is as the valve rattles up and down this end of the valve is where we're worried about this is where the heat concentration is because on this side this is where the combustion occurs and this is where all the heat is generated so the uh, heat starts to creep up into the valve and then this sodium that's here as the valve opens and closes the sodium basically just flops up and down because it's now a liquid and it basically extracts heat from the so uh, from the actual valve head as well so it's not just about absorbing that heat it's also about trying to just shift it away from the head so you don't get a, the head of the valve so you don't get a concentration of heat um, if we look at the specific heat of sodium it's 1.2 when we look at steel, it's basically 0.5, aluminium is 0.9, so it has a better specific heat capacity, so it can store more heat. Specific heat capacity is also important when you go about, when you talk about phase transitions from going from a, a solid to a liquid and then a liquid to a gas. Um, the thermal conductivity of um, sodium here is a, nearly three times higher than it is for steel. So basically the conductivity of um, the, the, you're limited by how the steel conducts heat to the, the actual sodium but as soon as that sodium has that heat and like I say when it thrashes around basically you can start heat soaking the other end of the valve and just remove some of that heat move it away from the head because this surface here is where we receive our impacts when our valve shuts closed and we want to try and cool that down to retain some of our strength in the valve um, aluminium would be a better choice in a sense apart from aluminium has such a low uh, melting temperature compared to steel so that's the reason why they did it it's kind of an old thing it's kind of rearing its ugly head sometimes I think it's that Hellcat that Dodge Hellcat and whatever obviously they had heating valve issues so they use sodium filled valves to get around that but like I say it's an old school thing um, with better cooling be better head design you know so that your actual your seat lives here and then if you're in your aluminium where your port is if you have better um, cooling management in your actual head then you can negate having to use sodium full stop one of the negatives of having sodium is obviously you're coring out the middle of the valve which means that it makes the valve stem um, weaker you know what I mean so it's more likely to break so that's kind of why we wanted manufacturers bike manufacturers and car manufacturers stepped away from using sodium it's expensive yeah the steels that they use now yeah it's a more expensive process 
but um, generally we we have better control over how we manufacture and how we design and then manufacture and cast our heads so we have more uh, better cooling not more cooling better cooling hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit 